and the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. Genesis 8 4. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month. That is, five months after the flood began, and when the waters began to decrease, for this is not the seventh month of the flood, but of the year, which being reckoned from Tizri, or the autumnal equinox, must be the month Nisan, which answers to part of our March, and part of April, and so the Targum of Jonathan explains it. This is the month Nisan. But Charka makes it to be the month Sivan, which answers to part of May, and part of June, taking it to be the seventh month from Sislehu, when the forty days rain ceased, in which he is followed by Dr. Lightfoot, and according to Bishop Usher the seventeenth day of the seventh month, on which the ark rested, was Wednesday the sixth of May and then it rested upon the mountains of Ararat. That is, on one of them, for Ararat is said to be a long ridge of mountains like the Alps, or the Pyrenean Mountains, which, as Sir Walter Raleigh thinks, are the same which run through Armenia, Mesopotamia, Assyria, etc., and are by Pliny called Taurus. But what is now called Ararat, and by the Armenians Messes or Maces, and by the Turks Agrida or Agrida, is a single mountain, and is so high that it overtops all the mountains thereabout, and that which makes it seem so very high is, that it stands by itself in the form of a sugar loaf, in the middle of one of the greatest plains one can see, it has two tops, one greater, and the smaller is most sharp pointed of the two. The Vulgate Latin version renders it the mountains of Armenia, and so Ararat in the Septuagint of Isaiah 37-38 is rendered Armenia, and in our version also, and it is the more commonly received opinion that Ararat was a mountain there, and this agrees with the testimonies of various heathen writers, which are produced by Josephus and Eusebius. Beresus the Chaldean says, It is reported that in Armenia, on a mountain of the Cordians, there is part of a ship, the pitch of which some take off, and carry about with them, and use it as an amulet to avert evils. And Nicholas of Damascus relates, that in Minyas in Armenia is an huge mountain called Baris, to which, as the report is, many fled at the flood, and were saved, and that a certain person, carried in an ark or chest, struck upon the top of it, and that the remains of the timber were preserved a long time after, and, adds he, perhaps he may be the same that Moses, the lawgiver of the Jews, writes of. Now this mountain seems plainly to have its name from the ark of Noah, for a boat, or ship, is, with the Egyptians, called Baris. Herodotus gives a large account of ships they call by this name, and the boat in which Charon is said to carry the dead bodies over the Lake Acre USIA, near Memphis, is said by Diodorus Siculus to have the same name. Abidenus the Assyrian tells us, that Saturn having foretold to Sisythrus, that there would be a vast quantity of rain on the fifteenth of the month Dacius, he immediately sailed to the Armenians, and that the ship being driven to Armenia, the inhabitants made amulets of the wood of it, which they carried about their necks, as antidotes against diseases. And hence Mello, who wrote against the Jews, suggests, as if the deluge did not reach Armenia, for he says, At the deluge a man that had escaped with his sons went from Armenia, being driven out of his possession by those of the country, and passing over the intermediate region, came into the mountainous part of Syria, which was desolate. And with what Beresus says of a mountain of the Cordians, in Armenia, agree the Targums of Onkelos and Jonathan, and the Syriac and Arabic versions, who all render the words here the mountains of Kardu or Karda from the resting of the ark on this day on the mountains of Ararat, Jarka concludes, and Dr. Lightfoot after him, that the ark drew eleven cubits water, which, according to them, thus appears, on the first day of the month of, the mountain tops were first seen, and then the waters had fallen fifteen cubits, which they had been sixty days in doing, namely, from the first day of Sivan, and so they had abetted the proportion of one cubit in four days by this account we find, that on the sixteenth day of Sivan they had abetted but four cubits, and yet on the next day, the seventeenth, the ark resteth on a hill, where the waters yet lay eleven cubits above it.